So looking back at this problem, okay, so this vehicle coming straight off this cliff, it's a nice level playing field, or a nice level uh, uh, strip of road here, and it gives straight out, and it, this, this car is driving off a cliff. Um, normally, this kind of problem, they ask you one of two things. They ask you for the amount of time it takes before it hits the water, or how far away does it land from the face of the cliff? Where does it land? Okay, those are typically the questions that I ask. Any other questions that they may ask are revolved around those two questions. Like, how fast is the truck traveling as it goes off the cliff, if it lands so far away? Okay, all those questions are kind of are involved in solving those two. So that sort of thing, if you can solve for how long it takes or, or if you can solve for where it lands, that sort of stuff, it's the exact same process as if to ask, how fast it's traveling. Okay, now, and I'll try to explain that as we go along. Now, the first question: How long, as in time, does it take for that truck, as it rides off the cliff, to hit the water? Okay. Now, when we talk about it falling or hitting the water, we're talking entirely about motion in the in the y direction. So we're only going to concentrate with only going to concentrate on vectors that are in the y direction. We're not going to con we're not going to concern ourselves at all with any of the vectors that are traveling are that are in the x direction. They're not critical to solving this problem. Okay, so we're only going to concentrate with that. So I'm going to go back. Well, how long does it take before it hits the water? Well, obviously I need to know something. I need to know how high this cliff is. I need to know this height. And that height is another word for displacement, and displacement in the y direction. Okay, so I'm going to write this, the kinematic equation, but I'm going to make a slight change. See that I don't have x's in there, I have y's now. So I have final position in the y is equal to initial position plus v naught t plus one half at squared. Now you got to be careful. We are talking about velocities and accelerations that are only in the y. We're not concerning ourselves with velocities or accelerations that are in the x. Those are independent and do not belong on this equation. So this velocity of the truck as it drives off the cliff, it's in this direction, which makes it the x direction. So that velocity and that velocity are not the same thing. Okay. Cool, so we got this business going on there. I'm going to shift this term over to the other side, this v naught, this initial position, over to the other side. If I, end, if I do that, I get my equation for displacement. I end up with v minus v naught. That's our equation for displacement. Well, in the y direction, another term for displacement is height. Okay, so real quick substitution. I'm going to say that the height is equal to v naught t plus one half at squared. And now, looking at the initial velocity, that v naught, remember, is referring to initial velocity. The initial velocity in the y direction. Well, how fast is the truck traveling when it jumps off the cliff? How 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 fast is it going in this direction, or how fast is it going in this direction? It, do we know anything about that? Well, we know everything about that. It's not this. It's zero. As it drives off that cliff, it has no motion initially that's pull, push, that's in this direction. I don't want to say pushing or pulling down because that's acceleration. It doesn't have any motion in this direction or in this direction. It's not pulling a Dukes of Hazard where it's got a ramp right here. Okay, so this velocity turns out to be zero. Okay, there's no initial velocity in this direction for this type of problem. All of its initial motion is in this direction. So velocity is equal to zero. Now, what about acceleration? Well, it's in free fall. I said that previously. So if it's in free fall, what's the acceleration of that object? Hmm? G, the acceleration due to gravity. When we see the little g, it's acceleration due to gravity. And that has a number. Dealing with metric units, that this is going to, the g, the acceleration due to gravity, is 9.8 meters per second per second. Okay? Now, is that a positive 9.8 or is that a negative 9.8? It's down. We set our coordinate system where this direction is positive, this direction is positive, 
So this direction is negative. It's negative 9.8. That vector is pointing down. So we're going to give it a negative value. You can change your coordinate system so it is positive. But for simplicity's sake, we're going to treat it as a negative value. Okay. Rewriting that equation, I get height is equal to 0 times t plus 1 half 9.8. Oops, made a mistake already. This is negative 9.8 t squared. Okay. So height, which is my displacement in the y direction, is equal to 0 times time plus, or oops, sorry, not plus, minus, because it's a downward pointing vector here, 1 half times 9.8 times times squared. Okay? That simplifies because anything times 0 is 0. So that simplifies to h is equal to negative 1 half 9.8 t squared. Ooh, this looks like it could possibly be a problem. I bring that over to the other side and I get negative 2 h If you can see the problem with this equation, well, I have a negative here. I have a square here. To solve for time, I'm going to have to take a square root. That's a problem, isn't it? I can't take the square root of a negative number and end up with a real number. It has to be imaginary. So the solution is simple. The displacement is negative. Here's its initial. Here's its final. Its displacement's a negative number. It's a downward pointing vector again. So this turns out to be positive. So you're allowed to basically divide by 10 and take the square root. Okay? So that would give me the time it would take for that object to hit the water. And in nowhere in this problem do we talk about the x direction. It's all about the y. It's all motion in the y direction. It doesn't mean that the van goes straight down like Wile E. Coyote. We know better. This van will continue to travel like that. But it's only the motion in the y direction that ter determines how long it takes for it to hit the ground. The ground is in the y direction. Cool?